This is my 93 C4 Corvette. I just had it ceramic coated and I just put on my new, um, I guess you'd call it sunroof and wind deflector. And so I'm going to show you guys how I did it. First thing, I'll just show you what it looks like from the inside. And um, basically what I did was I got an old top. I got the top for $100. And uh, somebody had a bunch of them and they weren't interested in the top. So I basically cut out the um, most of the top so that it's open. And um, installed my wind deflector here. And uh, so what's kind of cool about it what I like about it is that um, when you're driving and you've got your top open, your windows can go up. They have, they still have the crossbar up here to close against. And, um, and so when you're in the cab and you're driving, you got the top off, but it really is like having the top still on the car. And if you choose to have your windows down, you still got that crossbar, which I think is kind of neat. It gives passengers something to hold on to. And um, I think it's just kind of a unique, cool look. So let's get to it. I'm going to show you guys how I did it. So what I've done is I've uh, put a sheet over the vet and it's draped low under the top. And then I put the top down so that I can router it because I'm going to cut a hole in it. And um, this is the best way to secure the top while I do it. And the sheets just to keep my router dust from getting down uh, into the vet. So this gives you an idea of what I'm going to do, although I haven't figured out the placement yet. Here is my wind deflector. And um, I'm going to figure out where to put this on the top. And then all the rest of this is coming off completely off. So here you can see what it looks like inside the vet right now. And I've made it so that the sheet drapes quite low. So there's no way my router bit is going to touch that sheet. Plus I'm setting the depth of the router bit to just barely go deeper than the thickness of the top. So I don't believe I have any concern about the router bit tearing up the sheet or anything like this. So this should simply serve to capture uh, the dust I'm going to create. Now, I did buy router bits that eject debris upward. So there shouldn't be a lot of dust down here anyhow because it's uh, fluted with an upward uh, ejection of debris. So if you get into this and you hunt for the proper type of router bits, I mean, I did get router bits meant for plastic and, and router bits that eject the debris upward. And it just occurred to me that when I'm placing it, I want to be able to sit in the car and look at it. So I've been premature about laying this sheet. So I'm going to remove the sheet now and then go about the process of deciding exactly where I want my cut to be. Then I'll put the sheet back before I do the work. This is the deflector I got. Now, just an ordinary deflector. I think I got it at AutoZone. It was either AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts, but the brand is Auto Vent Shade. Nothing special about it. Wind deflector. Um, I guess that's probably the part number right there. I ordered one off of Amazon, and it was a piece of crap. Super thin. The good thing about this one is that it's thick, and it is... It is high quality. 
So at this point with a permanent marker, I have traced a line where it was. You can see my line right there. This is the front outer outline. I need to recreate this line about a half inch inbound because that's where I want to set the top, you see? So I trace the outside. I don't want to cut it there. I want to cut it at this interior line here, not the outside line. Okay, at this top point, I have traced my actual cut line. So you can see I have a double line there, but what's in between is what I'm gonna leave behind. And something I wanna mention right now, you cannot do a deep cut along any of the edges because that's where your metal frame is for the top. So I'm going to set the depth of the router and my intention is to just penetrate the thickness of the top. So now what I'm gonna do is get prepared to do my router cutting. And uh, I'm probably gonna start by drilling a hole because I do not wanna use the router bit to make the first penetration through the material. So I'm putting the sheet on and I'm Make sure that you push your sun visors completely forward and out of the way. And here I've got the top in place now. And uh, I'm ready to commence the work effort. This will be my secondary starter hole until I get used to the scroller saw. All right, let's see how this goes. There we go. All right, so step one is done. And you can see down in here, I've got my debris. This is the whole point to the sheet. It's capturing the debris, not letting it fall into the car.
All right, so my cut's pretty good here. Of course, this will all be hidden from view when the assembly is done, but I've got a pretty good cut here. It's very hard to go in a perfect straight line. There's no fence involved. I'm not using a fence, so it's freehand. And uh, so it's a little squirrely. The edges are a little squirrely, but they're good enough. All right, this is just a dry fit. I haven't attached this yet, but there you can see how it's gonna look. Okay, I've used the Dremel to get just to smooth it out a little bit. It's not perfect around the edges, but smoothed it out. Beveled the, the top edge a little bit so there's 100% nothing sharp about it at all. And now I'm gonna sand it. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do to get some of this paint or whatever it is, whatever this discoloration is on the top is I just have this abrasive pad. I'm gonna start with that. <laughs> So first I did 220, but I wasn't happy with it. So I came back at it with 150 and smoothed out some high spots uh, and some discoloration. Now I'm gonna hit it again with 220 and we'll go up from there. All right, from 320, 400. Okay, 800. Okay, wet sanding, 3,000 grit. <clears throat> Clean the top real well now with Windex. So I completed my 3000 grit polishing and then I waxed up the surface now. 
So now what I did was I took 800 grit and I carefully sanded the edge where my, uh, j just where my deflector, the, the 3M tape needs to stick or stick on. So I took off the sheet and I have not glued the deflector on yet, but you can see what we're gonna end up with here. Let's dry fit it one more time before we adhere it. I forgot to videotape the final step of this, so I'm just going to show you guys here basically what I did. So I let the front edge of the um, wind deflector dry overnight. And it was, of course, sitting at an angle like this, right? There was a gap here. Uh, then the next day, I took my tweezers and um, I just grabbed the, the tape uh, cover, you know, um, and peeled it off, exposing the tape. And then I um, clamped it down with my C-clamp, basically like this. And it didn't take much, right? Very light pressure and um, let it go overnight with that. So 24 hours letting the front cure. Then I pinched it down on the back like this uh, with the C-clamp and uh, I, that took care of the problem. And now it's adhering without any problem. And now we're done with the project. So you can see I put in this finish trim here, this rubber finish trim uh, on the edge all the way around. And actually it took me a couple of weeks to get back to this to finish it. It's been about three or four weeks since I last shot uh, the video here. So it's had plenty of time to cure and I had been driving it and um, I'm really enjoying the heck out of it. But yeah, it is uh, it is well adhered at this point. And uh, that's it. So it's a finished project.